Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, this week I review an indie gem that was released on Xbox and PC yesterday. Is this game a Zelda killer, or is this game just a pretender? Let's find out. In terms of RPG on console, the original Legend of Zelda was one of the true originators. The first ever game in the series was originally released on February 21st, 1986 for the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES. Since that date, the series' influence on the genre of a whole is undeniable. As with everything in the gaming industry, when one franchise's trend is highly successful, copycats will surely follow. This game was announced in E3 2015. Since then, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this gem to release. Yesterday, that wait was officially over, as this game was released as a timed exclusive for the Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, and PC. You play as a small fox who has been summoned to a mysterious silent filled with lost legends, mysterious ancient powers, and a dangerous dark entity. It is up to you and your small bushy tailed protagonist to explore the world and find out what's going on. The accessibility scores are as follows. Alright, to kick off proceedings, visibility give it 10.5. First off, with the negatives. There's no colorblind mode present in the game's options menus. However, there's very little need for one. There are no color coded elements that can cause an issue for a colorblind player. Hell, even the status bars. For example, health, stamina, and mana, which are displayed on the bottom left of the screen, is colorblind friendly as it is. Also, one of the biggest shortfalls of the classic area of video games was screen flashes. For people who have photosensitive epilepsy, this could be a problem, as it could physically induce an epileptic seizure. However, there is an option in the game's accessibility section of its options menu to reduce the flashes on the screen as your character takes damage. Which makes the game a lot safer to play for a player with epilepsy. Next on the agenda, on ability, give it 10. There are no spoken dialogue in this game. The narrative is very similar to the classic Legend of Zelda games as all dialogue is text-based, so a player with a hearing impairment should be able to play this game with relative ease. Right next up, mobility give it 10.5. Although the PC version has keyboard support, this controller option is not recommended. The best way to play this game is of course with a controller. After all, this game is based on a console game of the 90s. Playing with a keyboard will make this game a lot more difficult. However, when using items in your inventory, for example swords, shields and bombs, can be assigned to a particular button. It somewhat resembles a customizable control layout, which is a big win for a player with a mobility impairment. However, there are certain actions you can perform in game, for example, using your shield, you can't customize. So a player with a mobility impairment will be able to play this game with minimal issues, but fully customizable control layouts would make this game more accessible. Last but certainly not on least, gameplay gave it 10.5. Have you been into a concert where the supporting acts are better than the artists you paid your hard earned money for the tickets to see? Admittedly, when I started playing this game, the, my expectations of this game were low. The first 5 minutes of gameplay blew those expectations out the water. The game looks absolutely gorgeous. The cell shaded art style, similar to Playful Studios platformer Super Lucky's Tale, brings a lot of charm to the game. The whimsical soundtrack, performed by Lightformed and Janice Kwan, immerses you into the game's atmosphere. It is extremely hard to believe that a single developer was solely involved in the development of this game. This game is available on Xbox Game Pass for console, so you can try it out for yourself. Yes, for an indie game, it is very pricey, but it will be here worth every penny. The game's isometric perspective pays homage to the classic RPGs, for example, The Legend of Zelda, 
series with mixing with modern mechanics, for example, parrying, dodging, and countering. In the same vein, it's from Software Dark Souls series. By the way, guys, more on that in the next couple of weeks. In summary, Tunic is probably one of the best RPGs I have played this year so far. It's as easy going, family friendly, and nostalgic as it pays homage to the classic RPGs of the 90s, for example, like The Legend of Zelda. Another nice little touch, through the game, you're effectively collecting pages from the game's instruction manual. If you're looking for an easy going, single player only RPG to prepare yourself for more challenging RPGs, for example, Elden Ring, I cannot recommend this game enough to you. And the overall score is 102.5%. See you guys in the next review. Sparta Commander 1998, Rollout Spartan Legion.